Good morning. How are you today? Welcome to Grandma's Kitchen. My friend Patricia Wolf asked me if I would show her how to make pasta sauce to can. And it's her lucky day because, oh I shouldn't say lucky, it's her birthday. Because my husband asked me to make pasta tonight for supper. So I'm making the pasta sauce today. I like to start with fresh tomatoes. And uh, if you're making uh, pasta sauce at this time of year, you should be able to get lots of fresh potatoes on sale at your market or in your garden. Mine, I've mostly picked the really ripe ones and canned them already, Patricia, but I have some left that are still out there. My favorite potato to make sauces out of is the Roma potato, and it's this little oblong shaped potato. Mine are small because it's the end of the season, so I've just got a few left in the garden. And mine aren't really ripe anymore. It's getting cooler, and they're mostly green in my garden right now. But as long as they've got some color, you can still make a sauce out of them. The best ones, of course, are the really red ones. They're healthier and have a lot of that wonderful cancer-fighting agents in them. So about four pounds or more, um, not much more, but at least four pounds of tomatoes, fresh tomatoes. And to get the skins off them, we're going to dip them. I have a few actually green ones in here that I'm going to do as well because I didn't have enough to make four pounds. So you take the four pounds of tomatoes and you dip them in scalding water for about 20 seconds, 20 to 30 seconds. And what the scalding water does is boiling, it's been boiling for a while, it um, helps the pills to kind of roll off the tomatoes. You don't have to take a paring knife and pare them off and lose any of the nutrient that's close to the surface of the peel of the tomato. So I just throw my tomatoes in the scalding water. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And once you take them out of the, I'll just turn them around a little bit just to make sure that all the sides got scalded. And when you take them out of the um, scalding water, you're going to now put them back in the pot and you're going to put cold water, icy cold water, as cold as you can find on them. And it's that reaction from hot to cold that makes the skins peel off. The other ingredients in our pasta sauce, Trish, and anybody else who's watching, dear friends <laughs> who love to cook and can and get ready for possibly times of hunger, the way the world's going, you may be glad you know how to grow and preserve food someday. I have the cold water and I just wanted to show you how easy, this is one of the ones that's almost green, after, see how the peels just lift right off like that. And uh, if they're really ripe tomatoes, you just picking them up out of the water, the peel will come off in your hand. So it's it just it's such an easy thing to do. And it's the same way you do peaches or anything else that you want to peel that's a fruit. Like a tomato is a fruit. And uh, you just scald them. Some you have to scald for about a minute. And uh, 30 to 40 seconds. I think by the time I played around with the timer, these probably were in a minute anyway. Um, and anything that doesn't look good, like a husk or a bad spot, cut out. And you dice them up and you put them in. I use a slow cooker on high because you have to cook it for a couple of hours. And I'm doing a multiple canning today. So I'm going to leave it on a slow cooker on high and I'll bring it to a rapid boil just before I can them. So I'll get back to you when I'm ready to do that. And uh, we'll carry on for the next step. And this is just so, look at that, it just peels, peels right off. Wonderful, eh? And then we dice it up. So the riper the tomato, the nicer that peel. I always start with the husk and a cut and just pull the peeling. So this one wasn't quite as ripe. So notice the whole skin doesn't come off as easy. On the riper one, it just all came off in one piece. But it's still really easy to peel. And there we go. So the riper, you peel them, the better. Okay, I've taken the skins off my onions and now I'm going to dice them up. I have a dicer here, so I get them a nice little piece of sweet make it easy with a little less cheerio. And if you like to see your vegetables, you might not want to dice them very small uh, with this little handy gadget. Oh, so this my head does not. But if you like not to see the onions, because they're healthy. 
makes a smaller onion. It's just so long that they pretty much disappear anyway in sauce. So you really don't have to worry about that. I put my glasses on so I can keep some of the onion. This thing sure releases the gas. Now, there's two big fat cloves of garlic that my friend gave me out of her garden. And you dice them, crush them, press them, whatever. I actually like to see the chunks of garlic float around in my sauce. So I have a garlic press, but I don't uh, use it for this sauce. Now, this is a recipe for canning your pasta sauce. Why there's vinegar in it and, and sugar and such. And you might, uh, when you're making it just as a, a meal, uh, I wouldn't put the sugar, not that much sugar anyway, maybe a spoonful. And I wouldn't put the vinegar in it if I was just making it to serve that night. Um, the vinegar and the sugar preserve it. So when you're doing it as a canning project, these onions look almost whole. Um, you add those extra ingredients. Now, as you see, this is a pile of onions, all of them diced up as they were tomatoes. When I'm canning, I usually don't make such a small batch. I usually, oh, do that at least four or five times the ingredients. So, if I were canning this, you would see this whole thing piled with, with onion and uh, at least uh, 16 or so pounds of uh, little half bushel of tomatoes. But anyways, let's go now and I'll show you how, my head's really like watering anyway. Um, I'll show you how to do, how much of the rest of the ingredients you put in. And I'll be right with you. So I've dumped the onions in and my tears are still rolling down my eyes. And I'm going to put in four bay leaf and I'm not going to crumple them out this time because I'm going to fish them out because we're having pasta sauce for supper. But I actually like to leave the bay leaf in even though it says to take it out. I crumple it up usually till it's really fine, even use it in my coffee grinder to grind it up. I find a really wonderful Canadian version of green tea is um, mixing dried bay leaf, dried basil, and dried parsley and uh, uh, Steeping them in a pot of tea, and it's a really a nice aroma comes off it. Now I'm putting in a spoon of basil, and I love basil, so the recipe calls for a spoon. I love basil, so I always put a little extra basil in, just like I usually do the garlic. And we're going to put a spoon of, oh, pardon me, half a spoon of cinnamon. And we're going to put half a spoon of salt, or not salt, pepper. He'd probably double the pepper and then half a spoon of allspice as well. And a half a cup of sugar and a spoon of table salt. This is about a spoon. You can add more salt if you like, lots of salt, and a cup of white vinegar. And like I said, if you're just cooking it to eat that night and you're not canning it, you don't need the, the vinegar and you put a whole lot less sugar in. Vinegar is part of the preserving chemical. And there we go. And I'll just bring the camera over and let you see what we got. So there's our tomatoes and you can see some of them are, maybe you can see some of them are green still, but you know, it'll cook down. And I'm going to stir that all up and I'm going to put a lid on it. And let it simmer for a couple hours. I have to make bread today, and uh, someone asked me if I would show them my bread recipe, so I'll do that on a video next. Well, Trish, we're almost done canning pasta sauce. 
Now you have to make sure if your slow cooker isn't boiling. My slow cooker is a good hot one. And so it's boiling. You can see the steam coming off it. The pasta sauce is boiling. And it's very thick. It's been simmering all afternoon. It's kind of the consistency I like. Now for canning it, you just take it as is if you're going to just can it without processing it further in a, in a pressure cooker. You take it as is and you um, put the lids on and I'm going to show you that. Make sure your lids are hot. Over the side here I'm, I'm frying up some ground beef and I'm going to dice in celery and peppers in it. If I decide to add meat and peppers and celery to my pasta sauce, I have to process it in a um, pressure cooker or a long time in a hot water bath or 45 minutes in a hot water bath. I don't usually do that because I never know what I'm going to use the sauce for. So while this is still boiling, um, I'm going to try to avoid those uh, leaves. And I put the little funnel cap on here so I don't spread it all over my kitchen. And I fill the jars while it's sitting on a tray. Now if you like it really thick, like if you're going to use it with, with, with salsa or something, um, you take the lid off but let it cook longer with the lid off so that the liquids evaporate. The jars that I'm putting it in were given to me. One of my friends named Lorraine, uh, she buys a lot of pasta in jars. And the little jars that she buys it in, these little guys here are canning jars with the measurements and everything on the side. And um, she had no need for them and phoned me and asked me if I could use the canning jars. And they have worked really well. They're good little canning jars. I'm going to steam in my glasses. Let's take them off. Make sure you always clean the top of your jar so that you don't have anything spilt on it. And I don't know if I have that within a quarter inch. I'm just going to try to get a little more in there. If you get it too full, the, pop, the seal won't pop down and your jar won't seal. If you don't get it full enough, you have too much air in it and it might go bad or it might seal in an unseal when you least expect it in a cupboard when you're not watching it. And there's your first can of homemade pasta sauce. And I should have enough here to do two and still have enough left for my sweetheart for supper. And so, there you go. I'm going to fill that other jar. In a minute, I'm going to stop and cut my celery and my peppers into this meat so I can get them stir-frying before I add the last of the sauce. So, thanks for joining me. Happy canning. And I hope you have success with your sauce. Let me know how it turns out. Take care. Have a good day.